Hey guys, it's Greg. In this video, we want to share with you our thoughts about the Everrain. So the Everrain is one of our first Kickstarters ever that we backed and we've done it in 2018 and the game finally arrived after just quite a um, delay. So was it the game worth waiting? Let me show you. Not only the chaos campaign, but also the first hours with the game promises a really epic journey, super immersive and even unique in some aspects. There are so many elements included, like visit ports scattered among the Everrain world, hire different crew members with unique skills, upgrade your ship's artillery, modify rooms below the deck, gamble in a tavern, trade relics, encounter special narrative events and quests, collect clues, transport passengers and several other things you can do while visiting the port. But there is much more once you abort your ship. You can explore new tiles with not only other ports but also the White Islands where you will face other events, collect clues, search for relics and fight with enemies. You can visit altars to shut them down by fighting enemies. You will face enemy ships in sea battles and you can even abort them the same way as they can abort your ship. All of this to strengthen your crew and collect clues to face the old one at the final stage of the game. Even simply staying on the sea at the end of your turn means encountering sea events that affect your ship and the crew. This adds up to a few different decks of event cards, filled with a proper amount of text and decisions, all of it working really great in favor of immersion. Some of the events will be solved immediately, some require you to reach a specific point, while others will start quests only you can fulfill. Combining this with great table presence, Everrain tempts with its immersion and narration, and the first game rises the hype and this epic experience even more. The game not only promises a vast amount of activities and stuff, but also offers a decent amount of enemy types, where each acts significantly different from the others. When first enemies are a piece of cake. More complex ones can be really nasty, killing your crew and even sinking your ship if you are going to risk too much and push your ship despite the odds. Combat with enemies on board is probably the most polished mechanic in the game and it's really enjoyable. Another strong mechanic is your crew and managing them. Not only do we get a very decent range of crew members, each represented by a different miniature, but also each of them has different stats and traits, both positive and negative. While well, the base crew has both positive and negative traits fully random, more experienced sea dogs have permanent stronger positive traits and again random negative ones. This gives a massive amount of combinations of how your crew can look like. Another aspect offering a massive amount of options are ship's modifications divided into artillery, chemists below the deck and passive skills. You can have more guest cabins, uh, cages for capturing monsters and selling them later and even bigger storage for more relics. Add to these several types of artillery that vary in rage, damage inflicted and part of the ship it can be installed and you receive an enormous amount of modularity. When talking about the table presence, not only the art style is great, but also the quality of the components and miniatures. We have some mistakes like playmat is a bit too small, so cardboard tiles don't fit it perfectly. Old one have visible joint lines and spaces for trade cards in crew tiles are more annoying than useful, but in general all of the components are making a really good impression and crew miniatures are very detailed and creatively designed with very, very nice thematic bases as well. Sounds great so far, right? We were thinking the same, despite plenty of problems with the rulebook. Despite quite thick manual, many rules are explained very briefly, sometimes mentioned just in one sentence, uh, in a longer paragraph, sometimes mentioned in a totally different section you will expect to, and sometimes hidden in a graphic example. During the very first session we spent 
it constantly checking the BGG forum, but this didn't help with numerous questions we had and for which the rulebook doesn't provide the answers. But the worst about the rulebook is not what is written here or how, but what is not explained at all. Example, the final of the session is the moment where old one awakens, changing the map and current gameplay. And the manual tells about it almost nothing. However, problems with the rulebook are only a prelude to the obstacles we faced and were more aware with each passing hour of the game. And you need a lot of free hours to play the game. The first play took over four hours with only two players at the table. And only because we were so tired of rules problems, we terminated the session in the middle of it. Next time when we were richer in the knowledge from BGG forum, it went much smoother. So we easily ended two player session in just six hours. Yeah, it took us six hours to reach the final without wasting too much time thinking about strategy and calculating every action. With four players at the table, we can easily see this game running up to 10 hours, beating even Twilight Imperium. However, it's possible that some of the players will fall asleep in the middle. A player's turn can take ages. In one turn you can sail, discover new tiles, fight enemies, encounter events, and visit the port offering several places to go. All of it takes easily up to 10 minutes, even more. This way you can wait for your turn in 4 player session, even half an hour, having nothing to do meanwhile. We are so hyped with the variety of ships upgrades, cabin types and crew skills, but with another session we realize it's only an illusion. A wide range of choices was exposed by the simple fact that some skills and modules are much, much, much more useful and less occasional than others, so it's simply no sense in picking up the less useful ones. This also affects core mechanics, making some of them quite meaningless. The fastest way to get money? Forget about sailing through the map to get the best outcome from trading. Simply get a cage, catch monsters by fighting with them and sell them in a close sport. Getting tired of wasting an absurd amount of movement points by turning your ship? Get an upgrade allowing you to turn your ship at the beginning of the turn at no cost, making tiles with difficult waters almost useless. We got the same problem with the crew and after a few plays we realized it's easier to spend more time on higher action to get the more useful sea dogs instead of wasting money on crew members offering more occasional, sometimes almost useless skills. When you quickly realize the most efficient way to develop your ship and crew and you add to this super long session, it's possible you are getting to get bored in the middle of the game, doing mostly the same stuff all of the time. At last we were. The game simply stopped surprising us and combining this with a weekly designed final with the old one can make you pray for the game to be over as fast as possible. For the whole game you are collecting the clues to prepare yourself for the final, but when it comes it's not only far from being this grand epic peak point of the game, but it's simply underwhelming and anticlimactic. Not to mention that this moment is poorly explained as well. Can't think of any game that we've been more rooting for to succeed that has failed so much at the same time. The insane potential was wasted mostly because of unpolished mechanics, a massive amount of holes in the rulebook and a very underwhelming ending. It seems that Grimlord Games created something epic on paper, but the longer the fulfillment was happening, the less engaged they were into it. Ending with a beautifully produced, but mediocre designed and poorly playtested product. It's possible that with a totally new rulebook or revised edition, this game will be an epic experience. Everybody should try, but the current state of the game forced us to sail away from it as far as we can. Shame, it could be a really something we would play constantly, even with six hours of gameplay. For now, we score a brain only for five scratches out of 10 possible. That's all for today, see you at the next game and don't forget to subscribe our channel.